This is the democratic voice of Burma. Welcome to DVB English News. I'm Joe. In this week's headlines, Aung San Suu Kyi and Nguyen Myint move to house arrest in Naypyidaw. Thai academic says military stays are numbered. New Zealand unable to block invitation to regime representative. Activists say Chevron withdrawal from Myanmar isn't enough. Mon Zarni nominated for 2024 Nobel Peace Prize. The regime states that state councillor Aung San Suu Kyi and President Nguyen Myint have been moved from their prison cells to house arrest in the capital, Naypyidaw. An anonymous source from the Department of Prisons told DVB that the regime's Ministry of Home Affairs ordered the transfer due to the heat. Aung San Suu Kyi and Nguyen Myint were arrested on February 1, 2021 during the military coup. They had been held at Naypyidaw and Dongu prisons until Wednesday. Bottom line is that Dong San Suu Kyi and Wu Wenmin are arbitrarily detained. They are the political prisoners, so they must be released unconditionally. That was Jaza, the spokesperson for the National Unity Government. The regime ordered the release of 3,303 prisoners and an amnesty for the Burmese New Year on April 17th. The Assistance Association for Political Prisoners has documented a total of 26,524 people who were arrested for political reasons by the regime since it took power after the 2021 coup. Dulia Pak Prijara is an associate professor of Southeast Asian Studies at Tamasat University. He told Reuters that the fall of Miawadi to the Karen National Union indicates that the regime's days are numbered. The Karen National Liberation Army seized the last military outpost near the Thai Burma border town on April 11th. Julia Pak said that for the Myanmar military, regaining control of Miawadi is like reclaiming a vital economic lifeline. If they let the KNU continue to hold on, it will gradually affect the economy in cities like Malamyang and Yangon. Miawadi is currently under the control of the KNLA, the Democratic Karen Buddhist Army, and a new faction calling itself the Karen National Army, formerly a border guard force. The KNU stated it will only establish an administration in Miawadi after it has repelled all counterattacks from the military. One, two, three, four. Protesters gathered in Wellington after the New Zealand High Court refused to block an invitation from Myanmar to attend the ASEAN Dialogue from April 18th to the 19th. A lawyer representing the government told the court that by law, a visa had to be granted as diplomats from the Myanmar Embassy in Australia are accredited by Wellington. Inviting representatives of the junta to come to a meeting in New Zealand sets a terrible precedent. In the three years since the military coup, neither New Zealand nor Australia have given a visa to an official of the regime to come to these countries to attend a meeting. That was Phil Twyford, a member of parliament from New Zealand. Prime Minister Christopher Luxon has condemned Myanmar's military, but insisted he can only refuse visas to those on a travel ban list. His government has been accused by protesters of legitimizing the regime by allowing it to attend the ASEAN dialogue. Twyford added that Australia refused to offer visas to a regime representative to attend its ASEAN meeting in Melbourne last month. The activist group Blood Money Campaign claimed this month that Chevron's transfer of its shares in the Yadana Gas Project to Myanmar Oil and Gas Enterprise and Thailand's PTT Exploration and Production will continue to fund the regime. Blood Money Campaign called on the US, the UK, Canada and Australia to impose full sanctions on Moki. Chevron announced it had withdrawn from the Yadana Gas Project after it had previously stated it would divest from Myanmar in January 2022. We are calling for the sanctions to disinvest any business that could directly uh, benefit to the militaries. Sanction could help the people. Sanction could prevent the military supplies, economic supplies that support the military to kill the people. That was Om Myo Min, the Energy Minister of Human Rights. Northern Irish peace activist and Nobel laureate Mairead Corrigan Maguire has nominated human rights activist and scholar Mon Zarni for this year's Nobel Peace Prize. He spoke to DVB this week. The nomination is firmly rooted in essentially my life's worth of activism, spanning over 35 years nonstop. 
you know, standing up for any oppressed community. That was Mon Zarni, a Myanmar human rights activist and genocide scholar. And that's all for this week's headlines. I'm Joe. Stay tuned to DVB English News on Facebook, X, Instagram, Threads, and TikTok. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening.